How's it going, folks? Thanks for tuning in to the Impact Lounge. You have myself, Ro the Great, and this is the Explosion Review. Also, be sure to check out the other content on the channel. There's interviews, reviews, previews, and much more. Your latest news as it pertains to Impact Wrestling. So be sure to check those out as well. So then, getting into Explosion this week, our featured match is Eli Drake versus Fala Ba. Now, in this match, Eli Drake is accompanied by Chris Adonis, so that kind of gives you an idea of how long ago this might have been taped since Chris Adonis is no longer with Impact Wrestling. With that said, this match was surprisingly good. Um, you know, I kind of thought since we were getting Eli Drake, who's an established guy against Fala Ba, who, you know, it's safe to say is a comedy guy. You know, I thought Eli was going to run right through Fala Ba, but no, um, Nice little back and forth exchange. Follow ball got a ton of offense. I mean, you know, I want to say this probably had to be the most offense that he's got in a match since being in Impact. I mean, you can maybe bring up his uh, match for the Grand Championship against EC3 once upon a time. But yeah, Follow ball was able to get a lot in, which I think is good for his character. You need some type of evolution. You can't just have somebody going out there getting squashed all the time. But yeah, uh, Eli Drake made Fala Ball look good. Um, the ending sequence, though, I felt was kind of lazy. And it's something that we always see in Fala Ball matches. And uh, this case, you had Chris Adonis distracting the referee, which led to Eli low-blowing Fala Ball, who was going for the Bonze drop. And Fala Ball falls off the rope and Eli Drake pins him and gets the three count. And I just kind of hope in the future when booking these matches that involve Fala Ball, they find a more creative ways for him to lose. I mean, you know, you could use the ropes or for some of them who can hit their finisher, maybe hit their finisher. Um, use different me methods because we see with a lot of Fala Ball's losses, it's him falling off the rope and then getting that's it is a pin no one hits a move or anything that's it so that's something that i like to see them improve on but uh eli drake gets the win and um i'm happy to see eli drake part uh i don't want to say participate but wrestle on explosion i think it's good for the brand every now and then having the big names wrestle you know it kind of makes the show somewhat important although we know that explosion it looks like is used to kind of build up the new and upcoming stars, which I, I like that as well. But every now and then it's good to get a big name on here. So yeah, Eli Drake gets the win. Next, we get the press conference f leading up to the main event. Well, what was the main event of Redemption? So for those of you who, I mean, I'm sure everyone knew, you know, the original main event was Austin Aries defending the Impact World Championship against Alberto El Patron, but unfortunately El Patron was released, so they ended up going with the main event of Austin Aries defending the Impact World Championship against Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix. So just pretty much some information and promos leading up to the Redemption pay-per-view. Once again, like I said, you could tell how long ago this was taped since, you know, by the time this release is redemption pay-per-view has already been is already in the books so and then for our impact classic match we get jeff hardy versus kurt angle and this is lockdown 2012 now before i get into it this was a problem that tina at the time had and which i'm sure some of you probably uh echo the same sentiments i'm about to share but they would have main events that consisted of two guys from other companies and they were main eventing the pay-per-views and i thought that's what hurt was hurt one of the many things that was hurting the company at the time because you're bringing in these guys from the other feds and you're hoping that they're able to work with some of the homegrown talent that tna had at the time so they can get that rub but it got to a point where you know, those guys were just the headliners and the TNA homegrowns were kind of in the back background. And, you know, during this time, it was part of the Hogan Bischoff era. So it, so it doesn't surprise me at all. But just some quick, a quick summary of this match. Um, nice back and forth, a couple false finishes. I mean, 
I mean, there were so many finishers kicked out of, but, you know, the ending sequence, typical Jeff Hardy, you know, he climbs on top of something and hits the swanton and gets the three. So, you know, if it's something that you're interested in, go ahead and check it out on the GWN app. I mean, it was an okay match. I mean, it was nothing spectacular on my end, you know, outside of the big spot. But I felt like if you've seen Jeff Hardy swantoning off of one thing, you've seen him swantoning off of another. So that was just my thing. But, you know, you guys check it out and let me know what you think. Finally, our Impact Rewind of the week is Brian Cage versus KM. Now, this is, I want to say, the third week in a row that the Impact Rewind featured uh, Brian Cage. Uh, I forgot what it was last week. I apologize. But he has been on the Impact Rewind for a couple times now. And uh, this was essentially a squash match. He ran through KM. You know, he uh, KM had issued an open challenge. Brian Cage comes out. Uh, Cam doesn't want any part of Brian Cage. Brian Cage pulls him in. They go at it. Brian Cage is able to get his stuff in, and he wins with the Red Wedding this time. So he didn't use the Drill Claw, and I guess that's one of the things that they're trying to build up with Brian Cage is he has an arsenal of moves. He doesn't have one finish, although I think the Drill Claw is his main finisher. So, yeah, he gets to win with the Red Wedding. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much explosion for the week. So thank you for you guys for listening until next time you guys take care.